Good morning, ma'am. Let's begin with our first question. Let's go back 21 years. Uh, you dropped off the career track and came back a few years later with Aftar, which is India's most respected diversity, equity, and inclusion solutions firm. Now, what has this journey been like for you? And is there something you feel you could have done to prevent your own career break? Thank you, Sonia. The journey has been brilliant. 21 years of having enabled the careers of over 75,000 women, having helped over 300 organizations discover this talent pool called second career women, which is women who have dropped off the career track just like me and who now are pursuing flourishing careers with a whole host of Fortune 500 and large Indian multinational organizations. It's been an amazing journey. But if you ask me whether uh, you know, I should have prevented my own career break, I would say no. I think two amazing things happened on account of my taking the career break. The first is, uh, of course, I came to realize the need for women to have very, very empowered careers and therefore created Avatar and therefore impacted the careers of many thousands of people. And the second point is that career breaks have now been normalized, which means it's okay to take that career break for whatever reason, higher education, sabbatical, uh, uh, caregiving, any reason, and you still have the opportunity to come back and reignite your career. That's incredible, ma'am. Uh, let's move on to our next question. Um, you were perhaps the first, very first social entrepreneur to speak about women's careers. Now, in these two decades, many things must have changed. Could you share what is different in the life of working women today than what it was like a few years back, a few decades back? Absolutely. Um, in these two decades, I think women's workforce participation has actually come into its own, you know, as a discipline. Previously, in fact, when I started working in this space, there were about 100 million homemakers in India. But today, there are 160 million homemakers. And we also have about probably 8 to 10 million of them who are ready to enter the work workforce, provided we are able to really provide them with that support. The only question that I would have over here is, today, actually for women, um, the pursuit of a career is one among many other things that they have to really be concerned about. And therefore, that FOMO, you know, of uh, probably not doing the very best possible uh, identity creation of yourself is something that I see many, many young women getting worried about. So I would, I would say this to all young women who are about to start off on their careers. I think there is umpteen opportunities today for you to lead very, very successful and empowered lives. So I would say, let's not worry about what we are missing out, but actually focus on what we can do. Yes, such true words, ma'am. Um, there is a popular perception that concepts like diversity, equity, and inclusion are achieved more efficiently by activism and revolutions. Now, as someone who chose to create change purely through social entrepreneurship, how do you think you will achieve this goal of gender equality? I have the absolute utmost regard and respect for all great revolutionaries. And I think all progress that we see today, you know, for women, for all marginalized talent pools, for all underrepresented people has happened because we have had revolutionaries, because we've had activists who have, you know, raised the bar, who have increased the decibel of the noise that has to happen to make that change a reality. But I also believe that when you are able to partner with the same institutions, you know, when you're able to partner, for instance, with job providing organizations, when you're able to partner with companies and help them to actually build equitable workplaces, I think you are contributing more to the long-term benefit of that same community that you represent, rather than uh, you know, merely highlighting the problem. So therefore, I would say that inclusion, 
uh, you know, specifically gender inclusion, because that is something that I'm really passionate about, can happen when there is a partnership that is really created. See, the goal of a 50-50 gender balance in the workplaces of the country is one that really keeps me, gets me up really early in the morning and helps me to work along with this amazing team that we have at Avatar in visualizing the steps that we need to take to very, very carefully remove the impediments in the process of a woman's career. And when we do that, we find that there is mutual success that happens. Not only has Avatar itself grown and spread its influence over these past 21 years, but the big roster of organizations who we partner with and support with, they have grown. They have grown tremendously simply because of the fact that they have invested in the power of diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's such an inspiration, ma'am. Um, you have been credited with having created the concept of career intentionality. What does this mean? Would you want to tell us something about it? You know, um, we actually stumbled upon this concept of career intentionality because being researchers in the space of women's workforce participation, we were constantly talking to women, you know, both people who are very successful in managing their multiple identities, you know, and women who seemed to probably give up one identity for another. And they did it not with happiness, but with a deep sense of sorrow and regret. So when we started engaging with these women, you know, through different types of uh, research processes, you know, focus group discussions, primary research, uh, talking to them, actually bringing them together for conversations, we realized that when you are focused in a way that is a combination of not just speed, but also direction, that is actually career intentionality. You know, it's like, it's a vector principle like we have in physics, uh, like how we have speed and velocity. Same way, career intentionality is a vector principle. It is something that takes into account that, you know, you may not be able to work on your career in the same way every single day. You may not be able to work on your pursuit of whichever passion that you have in the same way, but it's okay. So long as you have a longitudinal depth, which means, you know, you are at it for a long period of time and you do something that gets you closer and closer to the goal, then you are demonstrating career intentionality. And this, we also realize, is not something that, you know, you have to be genetically endowed with. It can be something that you pick up. And, you know, uh, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm even addressing myself to all our audience here today. You know, many of you would be able to relate to your own mothers giving up their careers to be with you, for you, you know, to help you in your 10th standard, in your board exams, or even provide caregiving for your women. What we realized is when such a mother, you know, wants to re-enter into the workplace, what helps her is this intentionality. And that intentionality, while it has to be something that she demonstrates, also is something that organizations can train her for. So career intentionality is something, uh, you know, that consists of about eight very, very strategic skills. And Avatar believes that if women were trained on this intentional career pathing, you know, right from a young age, they will turn out to be amazing leaders, amazing people who create a deep impact in whatever they pursue. That's, that's an incredible perspective, ma'am. Such a very futuristic perspective at leadership and how the country needs to lead itself. Um, approximately how many women would you have placed um, in jobs in these 21 years. And with corporations still being very skeptical of accepting women in unconventional roles, are there any particular second career women that you recall that you would want us to tell, want to tell us about? So thank you, Sonia. Again, a, a beautiful question because it really takes me back to uh, many an occasion when, uh, you know, we would be that lone voice 
sort of, you know, knocking on the doors of large corporates and telling them, hey, that is this talent pool that is available, which is of women, not just second career women, but also first time career seeking homemakers, you know, who want to kind of make their impact. And they are kind of, you know, they have finished with the with the, probably the slog years of, you know, childbearing and child rearing. And now they want to kind of come into their own. And when I look back on of the, all of these years, I, I realize that as much as us, you know, who have placed about 75,000 women, you know, into the workplace, each and every single one of those women who worked with us, who was intentional about her uh, identity creation, about her wanting a career that would not just give her economic uh, self-sufficiency, but also really help her make an impact uh, on the organization, on her family, on the community at large. Each one of those women deserves a big salute. I remember, uh, you know, several programs, large conferences which we have created, um, and where we would have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of women who come, who attend, who share their perspectives. And one of the biggest things that they contributed to this movement was they told other women that we are not alone. That if you have taken that break in career and if you are suffering from a loss of identity, if you are going through that pathos, that moment of knowing that, you know, nothing is clear and you are kind of, you know, really looking at how do I navigate this, uh, this, this sort of a, uh, you know, deep abyss and how do I emerge out of it? Those women demonstrated amazing courage and many of them, you know, are women who I work with even today at Avatar. Many of the women leaders at Avatar are women who have had deep career changes and they have come back. They have picked up the, the strings and, and they have picked up the ropes again and they have been able to pursue very successful careers not just for themselves, but in terms of helping other women, many thousands of women reach their career destiny. So those were a few things I thought I would, you know, share with you. This is nothing short of motivational, ma'am. <laughs> um, let's wrap it up with our very last question. Um, after having not only created a path-breaking endeavor with Avtar, but also building it to heights that it has reached today, how much of what you envisioned would you say has actually come to fruition? And in this process, are there any particular takebacks from this journey that you would like to share with us today? Um, a few weeks back, I was having this conversation with uh, uh, another friend, uh, you know, and uh, she was talking about a young woman from a tier two city in India who had lost her husband to COVID. And all of a sudden, overnight, this woman, who's the mother of two teenagers and who has never worked a single day in her life, was catapulted into the position of being the primary caretaker and primary responsible person for her family. And she looked around, she has a graduation, but she doesn't have any support or any sort of uh, you know, enabler that would help her to actually earn money, pursue a career and be of support to not only her children who are dependent on her, but also to her parents and her parents-in-law. Um, then Avatar found her a job and she got placed. These are women who are discovering that beyond education, there is a gap, which is the skill gap and which they need to bridge in order to, for them to really lead purposeful lives, empowered lives with freedom of choice. And till every single one of those women is provided with all the enablers required to make those informed choices, to rise to the fullest of their potential, I would say avatar work, avatar's work is not done. And in order for that work to be done, it is not enough for just one avatar, you know, to be pursuing this goal. I would like to call out 
to many, many of the avatars in this audience, all of you who are seeing this program, to actually be part of that change story. And it's very simple. All we need to do is, first of all, become aware of the history of the Indian woman professional, what she has had to go through, and what prevents her rise to the fullest of her potential. Secondly, we really need to become allies. And it's not only about men becoming allies to women. It's also about privileged women becoming allies to lesser privileged women and other underrepresented people in their community. It's also, finally, about saying that every single woman in this audience will pursue an intentional career. It's about really taking that pledge and saying that I will do everything in my power to make sure that I utilize all the God-given talent that I have and all the skills that I have in order to ensure that I contribute really fruitfully to not just my society and my family, but to my nation. So I believe that when India touches the 50-50 gender balance of women's workforce participation, we will be a developed nation and not just because of anything else, but because of the sheer power of women's workforce participation. Thank you so much, ma'am. We really hope, we rather believe that Avatar will eventually reach its fruition. Um, are there any particular takebacks from this journey that you'd like to share with us? Uh, today, we have many, many more opportunities for women uh, to actually work from home, to do remote working, to be part of the gig economy. And so there is, uh, you know, uh, options aplenty. But what we definitely need to do is to ensure that we stay positive. We don't believe that we are victims. And we create an enabling ecosystem for ourselves. I think we have to be the change. And, and these are not my words. These are words of very, very famous uh, people. We have to be the change that we want to see. Yes, indeed, ma'am. Um, thank you so much for an enriching session. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and thank you so much for having a conversation with us. Thank you, Sonia. And it was wonderful conversing with you. More power to you and your entire team at St. Xavier's. All the very best. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you.